Hey, my name's Charles Penner here at JTEC. And we're going to go over uh, just a, a minor inspection on this International. It's a 96. Uh, I always do an inspection before the videos just to see it's really bad. I'm going to talk to a lot of the inspection because nothing on this thing's working. It's deadline for a reason, but we'll, we'll see it's some of the concepts down. Uh, first things first, when you do an inspection, always have an inspection sheet. Uh, especially a, a minor or a service, however you want to call them, because there is different portions, different parts of the vehicle you check. Uh, so I always start in the cab. You can start anywhere with an inspection. Just make sure you start in the same spot. That way, if you get pulled away by somebody, you know where you go back to. Um, I'll, I'll climb in, but like I said, nothing works. Uh, but always check your. Uh, it's an I6, so it's all. Make sure you're always checking your seatbelts, especially for manufacturer's recall and stuff like that. Make sure your stickers are on here. Make sure your weight capacities are on here, your tire capacities, whatever along those lines. Uh, we'd actually at this point turn the lights on, but the battery is actually being worked on. Oh, that's supposed to system is, so we're actually going to turn the lights on. But you turn the lights on, check all the lights, check the... Uh, if it had air brakes, this does not. This has hydraulic disc brakes. So you would check your uh, your warning lights for your airs, make sure it's filling on time. So like, just like you would do with the head and cab inspection. Um, also check your reverse, make sure it's going to reverse. Uh, release your brakes, put your brakes back on, make sure everything's decompressing. Anything to do with the cab. And once you leave the cab, we go to, we go down our inspect sheet, we go to the hood, to the engine compartment. And before you do that, Make sure your latches actually are on here at work. Because this is a this is a precursor to a DOT inspection. So if these things aren't working, it's gonna fill your vehicle. Um, all as you can see with the headlight, a highlight place. Again, another DOT thing. Crack in the hood. Although it's not DOT, but it's gonna kill fuel economy. Come inside. The engine compartment. All right, and then uh, so we go through our checklist. We check the brake lights outside. Make sure you have a rag on you. I have one. I tell you, I have one. So we're going to check the fluid levels, particularly the the oil. I'll throw stuff on the ground. Particularly the oil, our steering, and our brakes. This is hydraulic brakes. We need to make sure we check that. Oil's not on this side. Get in here. But we have our brakes, our, our brake fluid. We're gonna check the uh, the level here without opening it. If you open your brake fluid, you could actually add contaminants. And it's uh, because of how it is, when it's open, it'll suck moisture from the air. So try and keep these closed if possible. You check the fluid level. It is very, very low. In fact, it's way below the line. I don't know if it'll work. You can't see, now we gotta open it. Oh, my bad. It's actually very, very full. That's wrong too. So there's actually indicator levels on your brake chambers because it does need room to expand and contract. So make sure you're not overfilling your thing. This is very, very full. This has to be actually emptied out before we do anything. Um, and you're also over here check for your checking your grease fittings, you're checking the condition of the engine. And since we're over here, check our belt. So right now I'm just doing a hand tension. If it was really loose, I'm gonna get in here with the tool, but this is actually nice and tight. Um, get a rib gauge out. If you can feel a lot of wear, get a rib gauge out. And check the condition of your belt. Tensioner's good. Also, while you're over here, instead of doing everything in pieces, you can do it by section of the vehicle. You can come down and check your suspension. Uh, part of the suspension also is our steering column and our arms are right. Actually, we'll start up top. So we got our steering column here. It goes down to our, our power steering box. We got a lot of buildup here. Now, that might be a seal. That just might be a grease buildup because if you look there, oh, it's not a grease fitting. Look at that. There's probably, a, there's probably a broken seal here, so we need to clean this up and see if we got a broken seal somewhere in here. Come down, we've got, a, we've got a grease fitting to grease the pitman arm here. 
All right, everything will soot. A drag link, there's a lot of grease down here, drag link. We might have a blown ball joint, maybe. It's something to take a look at. Pull, if we can pull this back, that's not a good thing because this cup is meant to protect this ball joint. But we got our cotter pins in here. Gotta check your cotter pins. Also, you check your king pin. Um, oh, you can't see it's down underneath. You see it from down there. So, we check our king pin. Make sure we can, uh, we also need to, when we do this inspection, we need to make sure we have the grease pen with us. Because while we're here, why not do some greasing, especially the, uh, the king pin. You screw up your king pin, and you could potentially lose your front end while you're driving. So, it doesn't happen a lot, but it can happen. Check that, and go back out of here. Fat boat out of here. So, interesting thing on this typical type of lift, it's got this extra jack right here. This is really good for doing these these inspections because what we can do is we can slide this portion underneath our front axle, pick it up off the ground without actually doing uh, without having to do it separately. So we can check our suspension. We can we get off the ground, we can check the um, our wheel bearings, we can check also how if our king pen is loose, hopefully it's not. Uh, it, it allows us to do a lot of things just by getting the truck just a couple inches off the ground. So these are this is a really good tool for this uh, And we're going to get this thing off the ground because we're going to look underneath this. Uh, so on the other side of the engine, again this is a Ford, International Ford. We're gonna check our engine oil, we're here. If you don't know how to check, an oil, check engine oil by now, you're kinda of in the wrong field. Uh, our oil is actually a little high, but it's good. We're also gonna check our air filter obstruction here. Uh, well, everything actually has looked really good. It looks, looks like it's been reset recently, so. So our filter's good. This is kind of like a gauge for your parts per million for the uh, for the air filter. So when this is when this gets taken up, we can actually just change the filter. It's almost like a like a life gauge for it. It's pretty nice. Um, since we're also here, gonna check our coolant. And I cannot see in there, which tells me this thing is way too full. Again, just like brake fluid, as it heats up, it needs room to expand. So here's our minimum level, and here's our maximum level on this thing. You can't see it through the container, but we're sitting at about, about right here. So it's we're good for capacity-wise. This is the overflow reservoir as well, so we're not actually opening up the radiator. We're actually doing all of our checks in the overflow reservoir. That way we're not introducing any air into the system. Because this reservoir is, all, not only is it just a, a place to hold to allow the uh, coolant to expand and contract. It's also a way to getting all those air bubbles out of the system. Uh, since you're here, also check in our fan to make sure make sure the fairings are good on it. Check in the back of the radiator. Make sure we get good flow. You gotta get behind the condenser. So in front of this is the is the condenser. And on the back side is actually the radiator. So you gotta look down between which you're not going to be able to look at, but I'm going to be able to. to make sure there's no leaves out behind or something like that. Also check in front. There it goes through the condenser, through the radiator to cool the engine down. Um, also checking for any leaks, particularly oil leaks coming out of these seals. Uh, nothing really to note. Looking for corrosion around any mounts. Make sure there's no leaks in the seal. Okay. So we'll keep moving around. We're going to check our Gas paint. So if you look here, it looks like there's a leak. So there's a discoloration here. Now, is this from the gas the gas tank, or is this from water spilling out or something? I don't know. So things. Mean, this is what the inspection's for. It's to find to kind of like starting an investigation on the truck. 
depth he looks like. Can you come around here? I don't have a tread depth on me. Can you check your tread depth? And like I said, these are disc brakes. So the disc brakes are going to be inside. So you would add, it's interesting because they're, they're behind this shield. But what we can do is we can check our pads. There's like a little window here. We can check our pads. Pads almost, even though they don't look used a lot. They don't look new, but they don't look used either. Same thing on the other side. Um, also, if the truck is working, make sure we check the brake, uh, the lights, make sure the reverse lights work and the alarms work. All that is DOT stuff. So we're going to pause right now. I'm going to lift the vehicle up and we're going to just do some uh, basic overview underneath the vehicle. So let me go do that. All right, we're under the truck now. Uh, this is actually a better place to look at the brakes. Uh, keep in mind, if you actually have air brakes, you also need to make sure you check your air tanks. Also, you need to check your air brake, your your throw on your on your air brakes. They're only about about two inches max, so make sure that they're. And if it's if it's beyond if it's going outside, you keep so it needs to go 90 degrees. If it goes beyond that, your your uh, and your pads are not worn, at least particularly on drum brakes. Your pads aren't worn, then you need to adjust your stroke, and you might have the wrong cans for your vehicle. So there's a lot of little things that stroke rate can really tell you about the vehicle itself and what it actually is going on. So make sure you check those if you have an air brake system. If you check the pads again; they're they look new, but they're very rusty. So they so we got a rear diff here. You can check for our fluid levels once I find the plug. Yep, we got a plug right here in the middle of the pumpkin. We take the plug out. We can check our, our levels, make sure it's good. Although I see a lot of grease on the outside of this pumpkin, which tells me that this seal is probably uh, is probably bad on this uh, on this input for this differential. Also, over here, we're going to check for movement back and forth. And play, it doesn't spin. Now is that because it, the the uh, transmission has actually been disengaged? It's in neutral, so this should spin. So, so there's binding somewhere. It doesn't move up and down, which is kind of good. It should move a little bit, but it doesn't. So there's binding somewhere. Right, come up here. We got a hydraulic clutch. Uh, no, we don't. So we got an e-brake on this uh, on this drive line. So we need, also need to make sure we check the pads on the inside. Now this is a drum brake. So we also gotta make, check these pads. Now these pads are quite thin. So they don't have to, there is a thickness gauge on them. They're usually about a quarter of an inch uh, to an eighth of an inch. So you need to get in here with, a, uh, with an actual like go, no go gauge to check these brakes. Also checking your linkage. Looks like they're set, so that's that's why this thing doesn't move, because this e-brake is set. So we're going to release that e-brake. We'll pause the video to release the e-brake and see if we can actually check this. On. All right, release the e-brake. And as we see, our drive line moves. So we should get some backlash. Yes, it's chalked and everything, and the wheels are down, but we should still get backlash. Backlash is the teeth inside the differential. It's that space in between them. So we can move things out. Everything moves a little bit more now. Check it here. We're gonna make sure we check our yokes. So we've got some play here that shouldn't be here. And that's between our transmission and our brake. So because of these e-brakes, you, you introduce a lot more little things you gotta check. All right, in the back of this transmission, it's got broken seal somewhere. We've got a lot of grease here. Um, this right here is an inspection cover. You actually take this off and look inside. And we got another inspection cover here. There's a lot of grease coming down it. So we've got a leak somewhere. Probably from one of these, one of these fittings. But also while we're under here, we got to grease our, our clutch. So if you, I don't know if you can see, you won't be able to see them, but there is a grease fitting up here. You can see it right, right there. 
Anyway, you can't really see them. You see it? That dirt fitting right there? Okay. So when we do these, we gotta make sure we can grease all these dirt things. We want to make the shoe on each side. There it is. So, and that's the actual forks that actually move that disengages the clutch. Also, we get inside, not that you're gonna see it, but inside this inspection cover, there's uh, the clutch. The clutch is up here. We also need to hit that with a grease gun as well. And the way you grease, is you grease so you can see, first you should clean it off. Clean all the clean all the grease that's there off. And then when you're greasy, you grease it until you can see the see the grease come out of the fitting. Just slightly come out. And then wipe it off. The reason we wipe them off is so that we don't get a, a lot of gunk in there and create more havoc than we need to just by cleaning it, just making sure everything's clean. So also while you're in here, this is a good time we can lift it up. We can check how everything moves underneath. Check for any excess leaks. And since we're underneath, we can come all the way forward. We can check our leaf springs. These we can check their yeah, you're on the wrong side, but it's alright. So we check uh, our engine for any leaks. Again, we've got a lot of wetness. See, it's one thing to have a lot of road grind, but when you've got wet, there's an issue. And all you gotta do is follow where it goes. So it looks like our oil pan is leaking right between the, uh, the engine block and the oil pan itself. So, Well, I hope this was helpful. I mean, there's a lot that goes into a minor inspection. And this is a quick overview. This inspection usually takes anywhere from a day, half a day to a day to do properly because of all the greasing and all the checking you have to do. And any issues you find need to be marked down. This is. Fixing something, unless it's something simple like a light bulb, is not something you do during a during a uh, an A series or a minor inspection. That's something you would pass off to the technician if you actually find a broken linkage or a king pin that is actually uh, out uh, out of spec. That's just something you document and push on to the next tech. So I hope this is helpful. Um, put your comments below. Thanks.